Let's break it down. With just a few free materials, some simple brush techniques, and the right workflow, you can take a basic boring model and turn it into something detailed and realistic. And in this tutorial, I'll show you exactly how to do it. Let's jump right in. If you're just following along to learn the process, a basic cube works perfectly, but you can use any model you like. You'll need two textures for your model. I typically use Blender Kit, but for this tutorial, I'll download textures from Polyhaven and show you a simple trick to quickly set them up. Once your textures are downloaded, create a new material in Blender and give it a name. Open the Shading tab. Select the principal BSDF shader. Now press Shift, Control, and T. This shortcut only works if the Note Wrangler add-on is enabled. Select all of your textures you downloaded on Polyhaven and hit Principal Texture Setup. This will automatically set up your material with all the necessary nodes, making the process fast and efficient. We need to make sure our object is properly unwrapped for texture painting to work. No faces should be overlapping on the UV map, so ensure it's unwrapped like this. Also, before unwrapping, apply the scale to prevent any distortion in the UV map. Next, we'll add another material, following the same process as before. For better organization, once your second material is ready, we'll group the nodes. Simply highlight all the nodes, press Ctrl plus G to group them, or right click and select group. Press tab to go back to your material and you'll see your new group. Give the group a name, then you can either copy it into the other material or search for it by name in the first material. Now that we have both materials set up, we can start preparing the first material for texture painting. In the first material, press Shift plus A to search for the new material group we just made and add it inside the first material. Next, add a mix shader node, connecting the primary material to the first shader input and the secondary material to the second input. Now add an image texture node and connect its color output to the fact input of the mix shader. For the final step, add a mix color node. Connect the secondary materials displacement to input B and the primary materials displacement to input A. Then take the image textures color output and plug it into the fac input of the mix color node. Finally, connect the mix color node to the displacement input of the material output. Displacement isn't required, but adding it adds more depth and realism to the texture. Now, go back to the image texture and press new to create a new one. Name it whatever you like, set the texture size and click new image. With that done, we're ready to set up our brush. Switch to texture paint mode and open the tool properties. The first step is to ensure the color picker is set to black and white. White will paint details in and black will remove them. Next, scroll down to texture mask and click new. Then go to the texture properties tab and load a brush texture to give the strokes a more natural and realistic look. The image should have a black or transparent background with a white design like this. Once loaded, set the mask mapping to view plane. Then ensure you have the brush image selected. Enable rake and random to introduce rotation variation, making the texture look more organic and unpredictable. Before painting, make sure the color picker is set to white and that the image texture is selected. This ensures you can paint directly onto the new texture. Now start painting in the details however you like. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Just like in real life, concrete damage is chaotic and unpredictable. In many cases, the messier it looks, the more realistic it feels. Now that we have a solid base for texture painting, we can start adding stencils to our material using just three simple nodes. First, add an image texture node and connect it to a principal BSDF node. Then, use a mix shader node to combine them with the existing material. Make sure the new principal BSDF is plugged into the second shader input. Connect the color output of the image texture to the base color of the principal BSDF and link the alpha output of the image texture to the effect input of the mix shader. Now create a new texture by pressing new on the image texture, name it stencil, set the size, and make sure the alpha value is set to zero so it doesn't affect the overall material coloring. Back in texture paint mode, we're now going to add our stencil. Unlike before, this will be added under texture, not texture mask. Press new, then go to texture properties and load your own texture. You can use any image with a transparent background to create realistic stencil effects. Once your texture is loaded, return to tool properties and set the texture mapping to stencil. Click image aspect and you'll see the stencil appear in the bottom left when you hover over the viewport. To move the stencil, hold the right mouse button and drag it into position. You can also scale it by holding shift and right mouse button and pulling up or down. And to rotate, press Ctrl plus R while holding the right mouse button. Once it's positioned, simply paint over the stencil to apply the texture. If you want a clearer view while painting, 
go to Cursor Settings and enable the brush on the texture opacity. This will hide the stencil while painting, allowing you to see the results more clearly. Now start painting with your stencil. Experiment with different strengths and try swapping out textures to layer more detail into your design. If you want to swap materials, I've already prepared another material and grouped it just like before. Now all I need to do is open the material, search for the new group material, drop it in, and swap out the inputs and outputs to replace the secondary material. If the scale of the new material doesn't look right, simply double click into the material group and adjust the scale in the mapping section. You can also swap out the base color the same way. Just add another material group and replace the necessary nodes. Now with just a couple of swaps, we've created a completely new looking object with different materials. And that's it. With these simple steps, you can texture paint, add stencils, and swap materials effortlessly, giving you complete control over your model's look. If you found this helpful, hit like, subscribe, and let me know what you'd like to see next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.